Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, April 5th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect a high of 80 degrees under cloudy skies in San Antonio today. As the coronavirus pandemic eases its grip on San Antonio, hunger persists in the city. That was evident at a special food distribution event for the holiday weekend. In the Texas legislature, a bill on the fast track to approval has civil rights groups saying black and Hispanic voters will be disproportionately affected. We have what you need to know about the debate surrounding Senate Bill 7 over at ExpressNews.com. And the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament in San Antonio wrapped up last night, and the championship game of the men's tournament is tonight. The matchup between Baylor and Gonzaga is one made in hoops heaven. And now let's move on to our top stories for the day. Since the coronavirus began spreading in San Antonio in March 2020, it has infected at least 205,000 residents, killing more than 3,100 of them. The once-in-a-century crisis abruptly altered nearly every aspect of daily life, and it tested the resolve of long underfunded public health departments and a decentralized healthcare system, and laid bare the systemic shortcomings of both. With rising vaccination levels, Americans have reason to hope that some semblance of normalcy might be restored this year, even if the virus and its variants are still in circulation. As the threat of the virus recedes, medical and public health leaders will begin to assess the damage, pick up the pieces, and do some soul-searching. Lauren Caruba explores COVID-19 one year later and what San Antonio's public health and medical experts have learned from the pandemic. Bouncy like an athletic TED Talker, Greg Brockhouse is objectively handsome with just the right amount of gray in his hair, often wearing jeans and his Hoka running shoes at campaign events, along with t-shirts that yell Greg for mayor. Brockhouse is also one of San Antonio's most divisive public figures. To challenge Mayor Ron Nirenberg in the May 1st election, he has rolled out a more reflective persona and some dense policy initiatives. But his campaign formula is still heavy on name-calling, conservative talking points, and raw grievance. 48-year-old Brockhouse insists he's a more mature and chastened politician. The question now for San Antonio is whether Brockhouse can build on that narrow margin of defeat or whether voters have tired of the personal and political baggage that hampered him in 2019. Head over to ExpressNews.com to read Bruce Selkraig's profile on Greg Brockhouse. With the $450 million private-public plan to restore Alamo Plaza again moving forward, city leaders have committed to working with descendant groups to identify the locations of mission-era cemeteries. As part of a project reset, the city announced last week that officials would conduct an archival investigation and form an archaeology committee to offer guidance on interpretation of cemeteries of Mission-era San Antonio de Valero and the Alamo Fort. A human remains treatment protocol, separate from one in place at the state-owned Alamo, will be developed. But there's something more surprising about the city's approach. Scott Huddleston has all the details in his latest article. A month and a half after Texas officials began requiring COVID-19 vaccine providers to track their patients' race and ethnicity, new state data shows that Hispanic and Black Texans, who have been most severely affected by the pandemic, are receiving the vaccine at disproportionately lower rates than white people. The numbers are both promising and concerning for government officials and advocates, relieved that they finally have firm data to evaluate and troubled that the statistics appear to confirm the fears that the state is not reaching communities of color in its rapidly expanding vaccine rollout. Take a closer look at the data and how that trend might be changed over at ExpressNews.com. While the threat of COVID-19 and the need for precautions aren't over, there is one long-awaited move to a semblance of normalcy. Many residents at nursing homes are once again experiencing the joy of visits, something that wasn't possible last year. To get a better sense of the impacts and concerns of visits at long-term care facilities, we spoke with Tracy Cole Harrison, professor and director at the Center for Excellence in Aging Services and Long-Term Care at the School of Nursing at the University of Texas at Austin. You can check out the Q&A over at ExpressNews.com. 
Next up are your need to know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside of your Express News subscription. Music, colorful piñatas, and the alluring smell of barbecue return to Brackenridge, Woodlawn Lake, and other city parks Sunday, reviving the family tradition of Easter memories shared across generations as if they'd never gone away. According to a new analysis, the deaths of nearly 200 people are linked to February's cold snap and blackouts, making the natural disaster one of the worst in Texas this past century. The tally is nearly double the state's preliminary official count. Two years after he was killed by an alleged drunk driver, family and friends remembered avid cyclist Tito Bradshaw at a memorial event over the weekend. After a slow start, the two frontrunners in the San Antonio Mayor race are raising more money than ever. The COVID-19 relief bill did more than deliver $1,400 stimulus checks to Americans. It also will give nearly 7 million Americans free health care coverage through the Federal Health Insurance Exchange. We have everything you need to know about that over at ExpressNews.com. The trustee overseeing the bankruptcy of Parker School Uniforms has reached a settlement of litigation against four former executives over the company's 2018 collapse. Former U.S. Representative Beto O'Rourke does not plan to run for governor in 2022. The El Paso Democrat said on a Dallas-Fort Worth television program set to air Sunday that he's focusing on other ways to be involved in politics right now. The first redistricting battle of the 2021 legislative session is here, but it's not about state or congressional districts. Republican Senator Joan Huffman is proposing a top-to-bottom overhaul of the Texas Appellate Court District boundaries. SafeRide Health, a California-based company that specializes in arranging transportation to medical appointments for patients, has expanded to downtown San Antonio, where it expects to employ 100 people within five years. Four candidates are vying for two seats on the Alamo Heights Independent School District Board of Trustees, looking to replace two longtime incumbents who are stepping down. We have everything you need to know about those candidates over on our website. Democratic Republican Veronica Escobar joined CNN host Jake Tapper to defend President Joe Biden's response to the influx of unaccompanied children at the southern border. Read our fact-checked of her claims about the trend over at ExpressNews.com. Columnist Gilbert Garcia on President Joe Biden's infrastructure plan writes, quote, If we drop all partisan posturing and accept the concept that government's most basic role is to provide crucial services that the private sector is not equipped to handle, it's hard to deny that the president's plan, at its core, meets this definition. Business columnist Chris Tomlinson writes, quote, Sure, $2.2 trillion is a lot of money to spend over eight years, and no one likes paying higher taxes. But to put that number in perspective, consider that America's 664 billionaires saw their net wealth grow by $1.3 trillion in 2020. The Express News editorial board writes, quote, The nation is collapsing, and despite all of our social ills, we do not mean morally. Read their latest editorial over on our website. Columnist Elena Ayala writes, quote, Acts of compassion put life in perspective and make blessings easier to count, especially when they involve children. Read our latest column on the migrant boys at the Freeman Coliseum. This Week in History on April 6, 1968. It's here, read the banner headline on the front page of the San Antonio Light on April 6, 1968. San Antonio's hemisphere would be open to the public for the World's Fair after much anticipation and planning. Quote, Hemisphere's countdown has been conducted for a year, and now the people will take part in the final seconds before five gates open and the only World's Fair ever held in the southern half of the United States gets underway. Read more about Hemisphere 68 over at ExpressNews.com. Nearly a year after protests over police brutality gripped the nation and cries for police reform rang out in City Hall, 
Many candidates for San Antonio Municipal Office are trying to chart a more middle-of-the-road course on police reform. Sensing the popularity of police among municipal voters, several frontrunners and big names running for mayor and city council are trying to distance themselves from the hot buttons pressed by activists tackling police reform, while not shutting the door entirely on potential change. Joshua Fector and Liz Hardaway explore this topic in their latest article. Today's adventuresome travelers want more in a place to stay than simply a clean room, a comfortable bed, hot showers, and reliable Wi-Fi. We have half a dozen spots in and around Fredericksburg that are guaranteed to bring out the envy. Check out the six coolest, most unique Airbnb rentals, trailers, rooms, and lodgings to stay in Fredericksburg right now over at ExpressNews.com. In gardening news, Calvin Finch has your guide to summer flowers to plant now for nectar sources and color. And in his down-to-earth column, Neil Sperry answers readers' questions about red oak pruning, how to fix water-retaining areas of the yard, and more. One of San Antonio's best Philly cheesesteaks is at the New York Grill Express food truck. Read the latest review in our 52 Weeks of Food Truck series over at ExpressNews.com. What began as a tune-up for the Masters turned into a coronation for Jordan Spieth. The former University of Texas star won his first Valero Texas Open title in six tries Sunday, taming the Tough Oaks course at TPC San Antonio for the fourth consecutive round. With the Spurs giving up points in bunches, Monday is a good time for a visit from the NBA's worst offensive team. We have a preview of tonight's game over on our website. The top-seeded Stanford Cardinals claimed their third Women's Basketball National Championship in program history on Sunday, holding off upstart number 3 seed Arizona 54-53 in the Alamo Dome. Mike Finger offers his takeaways from the game and the tournament. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing for Monday, April 5th. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.